As a commercial company, it's very good to, to uh, support the non-profit organizations and doing some good for the world. I think the matchmaking in particular is a strong feature of the semi non-profit part of the conference. Last year at Simon of Profit, Simbi approached us to help build the interface of the web volunteer map. Thanks to the advertising from Aftonbladet, our visitors increased by 30%. Sime gives us an opportunity to connect with people who may assist our business as a social entrepreneur. Save the Children realized that what iSettle provides us with is a very simple tool to add new channels for fundraising. Sime is a great event. I'm especially fond of SIME nonprofits. Last year we met with Save the Children, and since then they use ISEL as another way of taking donations. Thanks to this meeting that took place at CIMI 2011, we were able together to raise awareness on refugee crisis and raise funds to help people in need. From SIME nonprofit, come up here. Have a seat. Thanks. Okay. Sorry. Have a seat. And I'm also going to invite Stephanie Tresco from Access Health. Welcome up on stage. And Stefan Kru, founder of Glocalnet, Godel, and another, a lot of other interesting ventures. Come have a seat. I would suggest you sit over here and I'll sit in the egg. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, great to have you here. My ideas on this panel is, is, is I have a hidden agenda, and that agenda is that all the corporates out there are going to say, hey, it's really smart to hook up with somebody that's doing something really good. That's good marketing rather than just something nice that you do for Christmas. Because I think there's a fantastic field there that I want to explore. Also, I want to find out how you tick, Stefan. You founded Glocalnet, and you're an entrepreneur, and then you founded Good El. And you've been quoted to say, not being evil is not enough. You have to be good. And I want to start out in that, uh, in, in that side of the discussion. What, what, what is being good when you're an entrepreneur? Uh, well, uh, I, I'm raised in a family where entrepreneurship has always been a very positive thing. And I've always thought it's sort of building societies. But on the other hand, uh, sometime in the first lap of our sort of digital embracing and hallelujah feeling in, in the late 90s. Um, there was, in, in year 2000 was the first year where if you compare companies' revenues to, uh, to, to, to nation's GDP, over half of the 100 largest economies were companies. Mm. Uh, and just as you have, you are working now with SEMA and introducing non-profit, um, during that time with Glocalnet, we, we wanted to save the world. M many of us wanted to do great things, and at Glocalnet, we wanted to, through IP telephony to, to, to connect the world through giving them free telephony. Uh, so I, I guess the mindset was already with Glocalnet, but then after Glocalnet, uh, I, I decided that I really wanted to start a company that had the main focus, the, the main target would be to do good. And, uh, together with some of my sort of my celebrity uh, or, or role model entrepreneurs, I, I founded a foundation that starts and operates companies that give all their dividends to good causes. So Godel, an electricity company, was the first, and then we started a fund management company, and we'll do something digital in just a week or two. Cool. <laughs> cool. So, so moving on, Therese, uh, it's the third year now. Uh, are there sort of th th this, this field where you have corporations and there's a lot of movement, people want to do good, people want to sort of, because people care. And on the other hand, you have a lot of organizations that are having that as their everyday uh, profession. And then in the middle, there's very little. How, how can you sort of bridge that gap? What are some of the things that, that you've seen happen in, 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 in some nonprofit? Well, um but the, the gap that we want to bridge really is these physical meetings that it take, takes place here. We want to spread knowledge, inspiration, share experiences, but also these physical meetings, we're kind of missing that meeting point, and that's what we're trying to create. And also, I mean, there's a lot of power in this room, a lot of mon monetary power, but also what we're after is the non-monetary power and the non-monetary help that you can give um, through contacts, network, and 
knowledge and in that way help. And, and that's the way we want to function as a bridge that we... Um, do you think it is a good business years. opportunity for companies to sort of well, it creates a lot of add added good. Yeah, but it's added value to the company, of course. If you work with something that, that uh, is more in line with what you do than to give, um, I don't know, a sum to something that feels good. It's just if you it's also don't forget about the individuals that works in the company. That added value in towards the company as well as out towards the public is really important, I think, for companies. Stephanie, yeah. Access Health. Yeah. Tell me, what is Access Health? Um, Access Health is a global non for profit organization, and we uh, identify innovative solutions within healthcare, and we help them to scale up and spread knowledge. And um, the Swedish office, which I run, is, is focusing primarily on elderly care and chronic care. And we uh, work closely with our regional offices in Singapore. So you look for entrepreneurs or social entrepreneurs or just great ideas and then you... Um, we go out a lot to hospitals and see processes and good practices that work well. Uh, but we, we are a lot of young people in the organization, so we do have a preference for, you know, new exciting technology and, and we're often involved in different events involving uh, technology for, for healthcare, such as Health Hack Day, which was an event earlier this year in Sweden and things like that. What, what are some of the coolest technologies? I get curious. What, what are some of the coolest things you're seeing, or some of the things that you, you sort of think should should uh, be the talk of the town when they when they hit the market? Um, well, in the future, we'll be, we will be much more focused on tailoring different drugs to your specific uh, set of genes, mm -hmm. and you're gonna. It's going to be much easier to see what kind of diseases you are. A uh, high risk of getting in the future, and then you will be able to, you know, um, live your life a little bit uh, better because you know that maybe you have a higher risk of, of mm -hmm. you know, high blood pressure or whatever it may be. So personalization obesity, from Amazon to your to your medicine. Yeah, definitely. So I want to circle back to these these sort of fields where uh, nonprofit means business meets uh, sort of hybrid companies in between. Would you would you describe your companies as? Companies, are you an entrepreneur or are you a philanthropist or are you a social entrepreneur or does it really matter? <laughs> uh, it has many labels, but I see myself as an entrepreneur that just started with why and I wanted to do, make a difference. Um, I didn't know the non-profit sector. Uh, I didn't think I would fit in. So I thought, well, if I'm going to get some impact of what I'm doing, I'm going to work with what I'm doing best and that's entrepreneurship. The real power is not, will, will never come from companies like Goodell or Good Fund in the Good Cause. Real impact will come from companies. Being at this conference and feeling your enthusiasm and all the speakers and all the opportunities out there with, with uh, internet and uh, digital, digitalization, that's great. However, our world is not going in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the right direction. We're consuming more of the planet than it, the planet can take. So I just hope that more and more companies get into their DNA, their DNA that they want to do good. Because, uh, you said uh, culture always beats strategy. We have to get it into the culture of, of corporations and hopefully CIME and CIME nonprofit can help get more companies. And, and it will make those companies successful. So, now I'm spending a lot of time in a company called Kivra, which is the, the, what you said that was actually not from the good cause world, but from Kivra. That, that's a high-tech company with a sort of a Google. They, they want to be a Google. Uh, we are attacking an something that will be laughed at. Uh, taking another sort of comparison from what you said, we are mowing down 25,000 tons of forest in this country to send those env envelopes with a, with, a, with a little window. And, and then you, you look at that and then maybe it's sort of 12 digits that you pass into your internet bank. You do all this manually, whereas the best mailbox would be, would be, would be this device, where we always have it. So if you're traveling, you get your, 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 uh, your messages from corporations or from, from the government or whatever there. Um, so that will, do, that will do a lot of good through the core business. However, we've said at Kivra, we say that Google being sort of something that we would like to become, they say don't do evil. We say that's not enough. 
That's, that, that, is, that is kind of 90s. Mm -hmm. Don't do evil. Uh, <laughs> now it's, it's uh, we're 12 years after year 2000. We should get into the DNA that we want to do good. And we have lots of other things that you could use our services for to help nonprofits. We will now look at an opportunity to help Stadsmission, an, help, an organization helping homeless in people. They need, they need to get order on their papers and their mail in order to get help from the state. Mm. How do you get order in your papers if you're homeless? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, so that's just, but that's keyer than approaching Stadsmission and actually knowing that they have this problem and hopefully we can, we can do something. And when we get more of these great organizations working with great new technologies to just twist a little bit, this will give, give their employees more energy, they will get new partnerships, they will get new ideas for their core business. It's a better but world. But I think that's, that's the, the, and, and we met a lot of, lot of corporates that want to do more things, but there's no natural meeting point, there's no interface. How can we sort of, how can we sort of bridge that gap? Do you have any ideas on that? Apart from Simon Nonprofit, we're doing that all the time, but is there, is there sort of, and one thing that I think is really important to say is that it's, you know, one company cannot save the world, but it's a collective effort. Mm -hmm. Everybody working, to, working together, and then we can... And we're one part of that. Simon Nonprofit is one part of that, helping to bridge. Mm -hmm. But, I'm, I mean, I can only speak out of what I would like to do with this, and that's it, within the years, be able to function as a tool whereby companies can see, okay, this is what we would... This is our... But we know what we know how to do, and is there a nonprofit that's, that is in need of what we can contribute with? And the nonprofit can, like, we have challenges. I don't know if everybody has seen this, but on the Sime nonprofit website, we have challenges, which a few of the, there's about 90 nonprofit organizations here, it's 200 rep representatives from them, and social entrepreneurs. And I think we have about 20 challenges where nonprofits sent us, this is what we need help with. Uh, is there anybody there out there you know, that can help us and can solve this challenge? And so we could expand that and make that and have it as a resource tool. That we need this, we can give this and match them. Mm -hmm. And that's one way we can help. And then for the you, rest, you, you choose to, to work for a non profit. Why did you do that? What was sort of the what was the reasoning? Was it a cool job or was it because you felt that you had to do that? What's, what's the difference between doing that and sort of going to an investment bank in London? which you could have done with your grades. I did, I did. I went to Stockholm School of Economics and then I moved to London. I started working as a stockbroker for Citigroup and I did that for one and a half years. Um, but it, it really wasn't that, that I didn't like the job. It was more that I couldn't, it didn't create any value. I was looking at companies from the outside saying, you know, that's a good company, that's a bad company, buy, sell, but you know, not being able to do anything about, you know, the bad companies. That, you know, that's kind of irritated me. And, and I, I didn't feel that I was providing value to the world at all. And I, uh, I had um, some personal experiences from the elderly care system in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And it made me a bit disappointed. I thought it was going to be easier for elderly. And I thought it was, it was better than it was. So I decided to do something about it. And one of our initiatives that we so we posted a challenge on on Sime. Um, it's um, it's called Silver Evolution. It's we, it's. I, a I like that Silver Evolution. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. It's yeah. about demographic challenges and and what's going to happen. There. We call it the Silver Tsunami, and we're getting more and more elderly in in all countries. Um, but so it's a multidisciplinary team of 14 bloggers all over the world, and they blog about innovation in elderly care. From their perspective, we have a geriatrician, but there's also just laymen interested in elderly care. And we do this to raise awareness about elderly care, because a big problem is the perception. It, it's seen as, you know, something a bit unsexy, but it's really not. It, I think it's, you know, the, the future in elderly care, because they're, they're, they're going to be a powerful group of people, because they're going to be many. But it's, it's the business opportunities are there. How can we somehow make, make it it's smarter to invest in, 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 in doing good stuff? I mean, when, when corporate social responsibility became a la mode, then sort of uh, half willingly a lot of companies started sort of having to have a department and then that started growing. And some of them are just having it sort of on the website and others are completely uh, reinventing the way that they, they work with, with, with other organizations. I, I don't think it should be seen 
It's a, it's a mindset that needs to be changed. That's what I believe. And it's, it's this corporate social responsibility. I think it should be called corporate social opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because then you change the whole mm -hmm. notion. And mm -hmm. it, all of a sudden you say, oh, it's opportunity yeah. for everybody instead of a responsibility. You're not nice when you're contributing. You're smart when you're contributing. Yes, and see the opportunity. Mm -hmm. That. And what is the what is the sort of the, the what does the nonprofit sector need to be a hell of a lot better at to to speak the talk of the the uh, the corporates or uh, because I, in some of the discussions they come in very very late and they don't really understand what the brands would do and wouldn't do or it's difficult to to match that. Does any any of you have any thoughts on that? I, I, personally, I feel that uh, many sort of. When I, if I go back 10 years, it's, it's, uh, I had a long sort of period where I was reflecting on what, 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 what was I going to do next. And one second I thought, okay, it's the only thing I'm good at. I should start a company. Uh, I should start another one. Uh, <laughs> after half a glass of wine, I wanted to sort of help and contribute to the world. And, and then was the non-profit sector there, and I didn't feel at home. Uh, so I saw this as two very different But why didn't you feel at home? No, I thought, I mean... <laughs> As an entrepreneur, I wouldn't probably work very well in a large corporation either. So, so I mean, a large organization uh, sort of trying to fundraise uh, probably wouldn't do a great job there. I would confuse everyone else. Uh, I, I'm not very practical, so I'm not, I shouldn't be in the field apart from the fund for myself. But anyway, that was my thinking. Uh, I thought that business was business and do good things, that's something else. Mm -hmm. and, I wasn't alone. I wasn't alone in, 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 in the sort of business community, but I'm not, I wasn't alone in, in, the, in the, the, the non-profit sector thought the same. Uh, when Goodell started sort of now almost eight years ago, uh, I met quite a few organizations that they were thinking they were, do, they were do, the, the do-gooders, and the companies, they were bad things, mm -hmm. sort of. I, I got lectured by, by people in fundraising about they didn't like uh, sort of old corporations that's necessarily bad. Uh, so I think what's happening is that both corporations, because now I feel when I meet sort of any representative from, from, from the business community, they don't think Google is that strange. It was very strange eight years ago, mm -hmm. but now it's kind of natural. Mm -hmm. Why can't you have a, a, a business giving it a pro, the, the dividends away? Uh, but the same transformation is, uh, is changing from the non-profit side, and, and uh, sort of things like SIEM and non-profits is, is helping. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's creating an arena, and uh, I said to Therese when, when we talked just the other day, and I think I said the same thing to you, SIEM and non-profits can improve, probably, uh, but it's the best example of, of how I think corporations should think. Instead of a conference, where I think there are lots of other conferences, I'm not mm -hmm. sure who, who's... What, with, at whom I'm pointing when I'm saying this, but I know there are conferences that give 5% away of their mm -hmm. revenues or something. Mm -hmm. If they think they have a great conference like you do, uh, of course there's more strength in actually helping by what you do instead of just giving something away mm -hmm. at the end of it. Uh, so so uh, I guess you will have lots of challenges actually dividing though, because now there is more and more social entrepreneurs, and I know you allow social entrepreneurs to come here as well, but how do you actually define that? Can a social entrepreneur make money and still be allowed to come here? Or is a social entrepreneur does have to be non-profit? Because that's not really an entrepreneur. That's a non-profit project. <laughs> I don't know how you solve that. Do you have I think solve it's that? easier. Uh, instead of labeling, it's like, if you do good for others as your primary source, making money or not, we don't really care. Okay. We want to spread good things. And I think that what we're seeing with increased transparency, if you have a transparent world and people know what you're doing and that lives forever in all the media, it's not like you had a bad article, throw away the newspaper and you're off the hook. It's, it's there forever. Companies will have to stand up and explain why they're doing things. Otherwise, they can't recruit talented people. They leave the bank and they go to, to, to somewhere else. And I think that that's, that's something that we're seeing. So, so I hope that in the future, what we're discussing here, it will be like the, 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 the basics of any sound corporation, that you really sort of take a responsibility and you invest in good things and you use the power of that instead of sort of shying away from it. But then you will have a revenue project, a pro problem. Uh, if everyone is doing good and you actually accept everyone making money, you will have 1,400 delegates actually saying that they do the good things, they should get it for free. Well, I think yeah. we have to, we, we, we a kind of a liquid line, what do you call it? But uh, we're a little bit more than ones that are starting are warmly welcome. But if you start to make 
billions as a social entrepreneur, maybe you could pay for your ticket. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's also, we talked to Skavlan here, so we're all set because we're going to have a sign non-profit in the globe arena. Skavlan is going to host it. We're going to have 10,000 people there and they contribute a little bit. So we'll, we'll be fine, I think. So if we get there, you've got to have a big dream. But thank you very much for, for coming here and thank you for doing wonderful things. I think it's, it's, it's fantastic and it's something that we're very proud to be a little part of. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.